Hey, what's up, guys? It's Anup here. Welcome to my channel and welcome to the next episode where I discuss about the one lens which I've been using since two to three years. That is Tokina ATX I 11 to 16 mm f 2.8 lens. So let's talk about the specification of this lens. I bought this lens, you know, uh, three years ago at a very reasonable price of forty thousand rupees which is equivalent to 485 US dollars. This lens is particularly a wide angle zoom lens and it is for APS-C sensors and it only comes for Canon and Nikon. It has a focal length of 11 to 16 mm, maximum aperture of, of f2.8 and minimum aperture of f22. It has an angle of view of 104 degree to 82 degree and it gives minimum of 0.3 meter of minimum focusing distance. It has a macro ratio of 1 is to 11.6. It has an automatic focusing mode. It has a manual focus ring. You know, it is a kind of clutch ring. The whole ring should be moved forward and backwards to switch the focus. It has an internal focus. It uses 77 millimeter of filter thread. It has a multiple coating on his body to give you a nice weather sealed package. It has a nine aperture blades. It comes with the lens hood. Inside the box, you will get cleaning cloth, front lens cap, back lens cap, a lens hood, and the lens itself. The weight of the lens is 555 grams, which is on the higher side. So it will feel bulky in your hand. Going forward into this video, I will be sharing about the pros and cons on each and every department and aspects and their applications also. So let's start with distortion and vignetting. Obviously you might be getting a doubt this is a extreme wide angle lens. If you want to know what are the lenses applications, I have already made one video so please go and check. You can simply click to this i button popping up right now. So let's start up with the distortion. As you can see these lines, as you can see this printout I have taken out. You can see the lines over here is like 99% straight. If I put down the aperture from 2.8 to slightly to 4, you can see the lines are totally 100% straight as you can see in the next slide. When it comes to vignetting, it blew my mind because it's a crop sensor APS lens. So, and I use it into my ATD to record. So, it gets no distortion or no vignette at 11 mm. But for full frame users or super 35 more than or larger sensors, you will find a very hard vignette around the edges. So, as you can see, guys, over here I have two images. Uh, one is this. As you can see the properties over here, this is 11mm and shot at f2.8 and the next one will be this one f2.8 at 16mm. So if I go down and these are the raw images by the way as you can see here. So if I remove the chromatic aberration if it is there or not, I don't know. So after selecting the exact lens as you can see this is, the, this is how it looks like. So I will show you the before and after right now. So this will be the before and this will be the after. This will be the before and after. Same goes with the 16mm as you can see. So like the ATXI 11mm to 16mm the same lens and this is the before this is the after. Before and after. Very minimal vignette. Jumping onto the autofocus one, one thing to keep in mind is when you are focusing through this lens, it makes a focus pulling noise as you can hear. So if you're planning to vlog on your camera through this lens and you're recording from the onboard mic or any kind of shotgun microphone is mounted on the camera, definitely you're going to get that focus pulling noise. That is the one thing in the focusing department you need to keep in mind. So there is a fix for this one. I personally use a wireless microphone and sometimes I use a direct audio sync from the PC which is being recorded into my OBS system. Pros for this particular lens in 
auto focusing department are it has a quick focus response for me if i am using for a vlogging i make sure i fix the auto focus ring to the manual and point it to where i'm sitting for me most of the time i don't care because i don't use the in camera sound and most of the time i do photography and videography jumping on to the next topic focus breathing in this type of lens you can see focus breathing is very less or very minimum because the focal distance between you know the 11 to 16 mm is very much less so you can get a very minimal focus breathing effect Moving on to the applications of this particular extreme wide angle lens, as an enthusiast cinematographer, I always look for detailed corners and edges, which has its own pros and cons. So wider the field of view, more the fun to work with. For example, in post, you get a lot of control over the video. If you are doing a handheld shoot, uh, you can crop and stabilize the footage. Like this way, I feel more convenient to shoot uh, because of not losing more content making the subject more cramped. You can use it in small spaces as most of the time I work in very tight places. So I needed a lens which can be easily capture the scene while recording. I don't want to compromise any distance as like that you get more room to you know convey your message or any kind of talk or podcast. Jumping to the lighting scenario of this lens keep in mind it's a crop sensor lens for APS-C sensors it's a 2.8 aperture fixed lens no variable aperture stops I was looking for a lens under budget and convenient to use the truth is there is no such lens I came across apart from this lens uh, you know to provide these many features in such low budget option it looks good it feels good you know it's bulkier in hand it gives you more control and gives you the quality content you need it has a superior edge to edge resolution and excellent contrast performance uh, jumping onto the focusing of this lens so keep in mind this is a ultra wide angle lens so you will be bound to you know generate any kind of bokeh and dedicated portrait like blur in the background i'm very much shocked about the power focal zoom of this lens so main thing is a power focal zoom lens has the ability to maintain focus while changing focus length makes it a critical tool to capturing zoom shots you know a power focal zoom lens has the ability to maintain focus while changing the focal length so that means while zooming focal area will be at the same fixed position that means while you are zooming in and out the focus will not change i was really blown out with this feature as power focal lenses are not cheap at all and their ability to stick on focus without minimum focusing breathing error so the main thing guys if you are in autofocus and want to switch it to manual focus make sure you hold the ring and tilt it a little bit on the left hand side and pull it down while switching to manual focus to autofocus make sure to do the same you just rotate the lens to the left and pull it up don't try to you know move back and forward constantly it might lose the autofocus link so can you use this kind of lens in a gimbal or not? Yes, you can balance this lens in a gimbal. No issues with this. It has an internal focusing zoom capability. So even if you are, you know, shooting at the end to end focal distance, you no need to reposition it again and again. The only downside of this lens is only for crop sensor. But if you guys have the option to crop in or any super 35, which usually crop the sensor or 1.4 ratio of the sensor so that camera can use this kind of lens or if your camera supports a digital zoom then it might help but i will not recommend this lens for full frame sensor cameras moving on to the weather sealed how this lens perform in weathery condition as i should say about the weather sealed rubbering on the edges of the lens it can handle very minimal rain and showering or snowing if you say rubber lining on the edge of this lens provide the lens and the camera extra protection from water or dust to directly get inside the sensor or camera jumping onto the chromatic abbreviations of this lens the haloing in the edges are very minimal the 99 percent of the time you will not get 
get it when you are using it into the studio space but if you are using it into the daylight sunny weather you might get minimal color shifting in the edges zooming into the specific area which is highly exposed to the sun let's talk about the image quality the most awaited thing so in the image department it clearly creates a high quality image tokina uses spherical glasses element you know as you can see here it's written over here tokina uses a spherical glass element in many of their lenses in addition to correcting you know spherical abbreviations these lenses fully correct light quality and distortion at the edge of the image and provide excellent result compared to other standard lens as you can see in the picture over here how a standard lens and a spherical lens are differ from each other the images which is produced is very crisp and clear because of these lens are using super low dispersion glass which minimizes the secondary spectrum caused by chromatic aberrations and the correction of colors done inside the lens for color abbreviations so the picture comes out very crisp and sharp and accurate tokina uses their unique coating technique for all of its optic lenses so that they will maintain faithful color reproduction and render clean and sharp images about the sharpness test colors distortion vignetting i will be sharing the image and some of the samples at the end of the video so please watch full till the end for vignetting i will not recommend for the full frame sensor uh, at least go for 1.3 to 1.8 crop and blindly you can use it for micro third cameras so the main thing for who this lens is more focused to buy so basically who should buy this kind of lenses the people who want to focus more focal area or the scene like compact real estate events landscapes and many more the good thing is for aps-c crop sensor owners it's a very good lens without any fisheye distortion if you are a cinematographer and own a black magic camera you can generate some very good content with this lens if i say if you are a mainstream cinematographer who used to shoot uh, music videos or any short films this is the right choice for you after i purchased this lens tokina launched their 11 to 20 mm f 2.8 the same lens also it's look similar and identical to each other but at a slightly increase of price if you guys want to get extra 15 to 18 degree of zoom then you should probably invest onto that 11 to 20 mm f 2.8 lens if you want to check out the sample of the image and the video quality of this particular lens you can visit to their official youtube channel and you can check out about this lens as you can see they have put many short films and sample footage with this lens here are some of them So the real life scenario where you can use it in my thought and most of the time i already did like vlogging real estate indoor and outdoor architecture filmmaking for me 16 mm is the sweet spot where it wide enough to use in all situations but not so wide it starts to distort samyang lens this is 35 mm t1.9 which is compatible for sony by the way this body is sony a74 so if you guys want a review for this lens along with the camera let me know in the comment section down below looks like it's a videography manual lens but no uh, we can do photography as well and it is a autofocus lens it's a pretty good one if you want to see a review for this lens let me know in the comment section down below by the way, this is our second camera which my friend used. This is Sony A74. It's a full film camera and some of the footage from this video are taken from this camera and this 35mm lens. So just let me know if you want a full review of this lens. So here you have it. Whether the brand is same or not, one must have a wide angle lens in their camera kit. If you own any kind of you know camera brand, Sony, Canon, Nikon, whatever it is, you should be having one wide angle lens. I will recommend for the full frame people to pick 24mm to 35mm. It will be the best wide angle gear to add into their kit. Those focal ranges are very much good to explore your perspective of cinema world. If you're really into the cinematics, you should have this kind of lens. I hope this video can help you decide whether you want to purchase this kind of lens or invest into this wide angle kind of lens. Let's quickly finish off with the highlighted features of this lens. 
which it's provide. It has an ultra wide angle 11 to 16 mm focal length, which is ideal for shooting landscape, interior, nightscapes, and group shots. Second, it has a constant maximum aperture of f2.8, uh, which is great in low light shooting, exceptional depth of field, and it has an easy manual management. Third, it has an excellent optical performance. It gives you edge to edge sharpness, which reduces flares and ghosting effects. Fourth, it has an internal focus, which is also known as power focals. No problem with the lens balancing and using graduated for polarizing filter also. Fifth one is water repellent coating, which is weather sealed. As you saw this in the video, Video. Sixth, it has a one-touch focus clutch mechanism. It has an easy autofocus and manual focus switching without any interruption while you are shooting. And lastly, it is priced at a very reasonable price which gives very high level of performance. So what's the full sample of this uh, I have prepared for this particular episode and hope you guys like it. If you guys have any issue or get to know any kind of information for any particular lens, let me know in the comment section down below and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.